I present to you James P. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, we are here. We are here. Another week has flown by. Ah, I know I say that every week because it's true. Time flies by incredibly fast. Welcome everyone to Uncensored Hard Hitting Truth. I'm your host James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21, the hardest hitting internet talk radio station on the planet. And I am here, uh, or we are here, at the uh, Newsletter Censored Research Center in Northeastern New Jersey. It is Saturday afternoon. Uh, it is uh, the end of the month of June 2015. Thank God um, that, uh, well, you know, I mean, it was okay, really. I, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad of a month. I got aggravated a, a few times. Uh, um, uh, some of the people that we counsel, some of the po folk that we counsel, are collecting social services, and you know, occasionally they call us to tell us uh, of the horrendous treatment they get and all the bullshit they have to put up with with caseworkers. And um, you know, like, like, like they're giving them so much money to help them out. I mean, come on, it's chump change, it's chicken feed, and the cost of living is a mile above what anyone on social services gets. A mile above. Even if you're getting social security retirement, you're still below, way below the, uh, the cost of living. And of course, the minimum wage is not uh, updated e equal to the cost of living. Um, I don't think you're living. You won't be living high on the hog at fifteen dollars an hour. You you would probably get by uh, if you're working for a uh, full time. Uh, but let me get, get the formalities over with. I want to introduce to you my illustrious co-host and mentor, and the very founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977. The one and only, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Sleepy, like me, yeah. Um, now, um, it you know, it doesn't surprise me, but it, 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 in a way, I am surprised. I mean, I'm not shocked, but I am surprised that they would have the audacity to make the statement. They, uh, the Republicans now do not believe that um, people in America that are working full-time 39 hours a week are, are entitled to health care but they're but they're working full-time so so first the poor are not entitled do not have a right to health care now it's people working full-time in America that don't have a right to health care <laughs> well they did that with uh, overtime <coughs> also I knew it was going to happen. the rules, baby. See, see what happens when, when you deal with a very selfish um, person that has a bad intent, ba uh, uh, bad agendas, negative agendas. You give them an inch, and they start, and then they want more, and more, and more, and more. And then first they came for this one, then they came for that one, then they came for you, then. They, you know, so it was just a matter of time when, you know, uh, well, first the poor don't deserve anything. Now they're coming after, I guess you might as well say, middle class people, right? People that have full time jobs. The Republicans have been destroying the middle class for a long, long time. Well, when they say 39 hours, that's considered full time today. Now. No, it ain't. Well, 40, 40 hours. 40 hours. Okay. So, That's why they did 39. So they don't have to give you full-time exactly. benefits. Same thing with overtime, so, I'm telling but you. But this, this involves people making any salary per hour. Yeah. A, 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 a 39, it could be 39 hours of minimum wage, or it could be 39 hours 
of $22 an hour. Yeah. So if you're working, see, first they complain if you're not working you're full time. You're lazy. You're a moocha. Moocha, right. First they complain if you're not working. Yeah. Now if you're working, they're bitching and moaning. <laughs> so I, but I don't see them bitching and moaning about their vacations and their times that they do not work. Listen, I'm talking about the Congress listen, specifically. They're, they're, they keep on saying that poor people on s social services and food stamps and whatever, you know, like the uh, douchebag uh, Gorgon, uh, Joni Ernst. Yes. Uh, a, a selfish, I corrected evil, her last selfish, night. greedy bitch. Huh? I corrected her last night again. She. She, 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 she'll call the poor, she'll accuse the poor of stealing from the people who pay taxes. Yeah. But what about the Republicans who steal big time from the taxpayers to give billions per year in subsidies to the rich and corporations? That's not stealing? It's okay because it's going up. Where's your little siphon? You know your siphon. Oh yeah, let me get Give this. Give your siphon thing here. Let me. That's uh, what we do. There's no trickle down economics. It's siphon up to the top twenty percent. The devil's economics, capitalism, especially crony capitalism, Ugh. is the devil's economics. Siphon up. Okay. Siphon made its, its. So anything that does that is okay with them. Well, I mean. Republicans to uh, going after the poor is horrible, of course. Ugh. But going after working people, you know, that are working, uh, you know, some companies in New Jersey they consider full time uh, to be in the uh, in the mid thirties to to forty hours, like uh, in the up, mid to upper thirties. In hours, in other words, the definition of a full-time job is not in 40 hours in every state. We don't know that. I don't know that offhand. You know, all I, I know is the definition of full-time is 40 hours. Right. Whose definition? I have no idea. It's insane. It's um, despicable. Well, they're trying to get more money to siphon up. The, the, they want to steal your social security money because it's not an entitlement it's your your social security money they want to steal that well, they don't they, I, they obviously do not want health care and and uh, uh, education to be rights no. republicans they want you to pay out of pocket for everything in this uh, lousy capitalist system so uh... in my opinion uh... and also, this is all part of our series. <clears throat> capitalism in a conch shell. <laughs> it is all capitalism in a conch shell. There's the conch. That I like the conch Republicans on the head with. <laughs> but uh, Republicans are the lowest of scum. And honestly, middle class and poor morons that vote Republican are in fact... Morons. More morons because they do not have your best interest ever never have they never have and most likely never will and uh, they um, they will never improve your life in any way shape or form no. at all no. and, and it's very clear there's no it's not in your best interest to ever vote Republican if you're poor or middle class it's extremely foolish and you're only you're only t putting the noose around your own neck. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I read a banner today about all the achievements that the Democratic Party was responsible for, and uh -huh. e every one of them was positive. And it was a long list, Dr. Bill, of achievements. And at the bottom it says, name me one achievement that, that came from the Republican Party. Name me one. You have to go back to Dwight D. Eisenhower. Aside from giving the rich a permanent tax vacation. Yeah. That's about it, right? Otherwise, you have to go back to Dwight and the uh, highway program. Yeah. You know, where we paid for the interstate highways and all that other crap, all this shit. Uh huh. That was Dwight the eyes now. Well, um, then we have um, 
privatized prison quotas means fraudulent arrests since corporate owners, corporate owners who built these privatized prisons are now suing the red states that they're in for not keeping the prisons full. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about corrupt, corruption and fraud, false arrests, phony arrests, people planting drugs as an excuse to throw you in prison so you could work as a slave for these horrible corporations that decided, hey, labor's cheaper if we have uh, inmates do it than outsourcing the job somewhere else overseas. Because in actuality, let's understand what's going on in the minds of some people. They want slavery back. They should just They've never gotten over. They lost the fucking Civil War. What? Well, that's why they like the stars and bars of the Confederate flag. Oh, it had nothing to do with slavery. See, the the the, the demons, the demonic Dixiecrats, they jump ship during the Civil Rights Movement. After the Civil Rights Movement, they they switched to the Republican Party. You know, uh, the uh, the racist Democrats like you, George Wallace, mm -hmm. and. Um, they haven't gotten over that or the Civil War, Correct. and but they don't want to come clean and just admit that they're just flat out racist. Now they seem to be obsessed, Doctor Bill, with eliminating Obamacare. Well, oh, now, still. do they want to eliminate Obamacare because it's really that terrible to them, or do they want to do it because the word Obama? is in Obamacare and they're just that racist. No, they just don't want anybody covered. They want the private companies. You want they want you to go to a private company and get your health insurance. Simple as that. What if you don't have the money? They don't want the government involved at all. What if you can't afford the premiums? Well that's what was at the court the court uh, right now was the subsidies that you get if you can't. They don't like that. Nope. They don't now, want. Let's they, face the fact, though. They don't like it being the a right. corporations wrote the freaking law. They okay? don't. They don't want education and health care to be rights. Well, they Simply. happen to be rights, and and what you say about them doesn't change that. But we allow the the uh, Republicans all the time to have the high, the moral high ground and the 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 the. the, the, the they handle the debate. Well, they they the put out there what we will debate. No, we will determine what we talk about. Yeah, now, now uh, 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 pointy nose Ted Cruz wants the, the the Congress, the House rather, to have the right to um, get rid of the Supreme Court to vote out. Yeah. To eliminate, to override, and perhaps get rid of the Supreme Court of the he United States. He wants judges to be elected. So he does. You want to call it a so he can put in his right winger. So you want to call it a right wing dictatorship? Uh, 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 yeah, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's like it's like the monarchies of the old days. You know, they they don't want any um, fairness, and they uh, eventually it'll get to the point where Republicans won't really. Um, have uh, 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 count your vote on anything, you know, the people. Republicans we move people. towards fascism. Yeah, well, you won't okay. even you won't even have the right to vote for something. It's That's like, uh, all right, we're 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 dictators. We control you and the country, and that's it. You know, and uh, what is it that gentleman said when fascism comes to America? It'll be wrapped. In a, an American flag and a cross. I would say the Bible, not a cross. the Bible. The Bible. But he did say cross, but well, I would that say means the, the Bible. Bible, which they know nothing about. I mean, right. uh, you know, uh, uh, um, now now all these right wing pastors uh, want to. Uh, hey, let them flame, baby. Who all, cares? They're all threatening to set themselves on fire if <laughs> if gay marriage becomes the law of the land. Across the board, you know what? Well, it is the law of the land now. Please do us a favor and take all the <laughs> conservative politicians with you. Yeah. Do us a favor and set yourself ablaze. Cool. 
And I, you, Take you, away you, all the fire extinguishers, eh, boys? Well, you see what I I, I, um, I posted on the group? Uh, uh, can I use Can I use the pastor to start my barbecue? Maybe roast some uh, some uh, not yeah, worse. Use them as a chimney. <laughs> yeah, know? who cares? I, I could care less. Who cares? You know what I said? I, I said this is this is. Watch what happens. This big, dramatic, melodramatic bluff. Watch what happens. This is the same as when Rush Limbaugh threatened to move to Costa Rica if Obamacare. Yeah, is he gone yet? No. If Obamacare became a reality, he was threatening to move to Costa Rica. He hasn't left yet. I hear in Costa Rica you can rent a young boy for the night. You're talking about uh, escorts and prostitution is legal? Yes, I am. In Costa Rica. Well, a young boy means exploiting a minor. That, that, okay. that, that is, that is uh, I don't think prostitution or marijuana should be crimes, but when you're dealing with minors, I think that's a big crime. It has been said. But if you're rich. That Mr. Limbaugh swings that way. Yeah, and, and he likes painkillers. Well, he that likes we them. already know because he. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know. Uh, well, he didn't go to jail. How come? Well, in Latin America, in or any third world country, I, I, I get the feeling it's very easy to grease the palms of. Oh, yeah. of the police and politicians to get anything you want to get anything you want if you're rich you get I heard um, in Colombia the um, the the uh, all the like the tourists and, and people with money are very well protected by uh, like this. even soldiers and make sure no riffraff bothers ah. them or make sure but but as far as the common folk down there you're like worthless as far as the really? government goes. It's a t total pure crony capitalism where everything has a monetary value, even human life. Bingo. Has a price. Bingo. Mm hmm. Yeah. Okay, I want to say, I want to mention something positive. I read that. Um, that all the uh, labor unions in the United States are now endorsing uh, Bernie Sanders. Yeah. Very proud to announce that because I'm pro-union, pro-teamsters, pro-union across the board. Congratulations, Bernie Sanders. Um, we're behind you. Uh, this is really, his momentum is really picking up at a rapid rate. And he seems to not have any problem uh, with uh, getting his campaign funded. And, and, and the people that are showing up in, in his public appearances from state to state have been quite ample. Oh, they're not hired like Mr. Trump's? Donald Trump paying 50, oh, big spender, paying $50 a head for you to cheer for him. No, they're not hired. Oh. It is not a stage spectacle, hmm. a theatrics, you know, uh, um, but um, man, people sure make jokes about Trump's hair. I think Trump is the driver of the clown bus, no? Yeah, he I is now. So. He's the most colorful character. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, uh, the jokes about his hair is, n is never ending, you know, from roadkill or, you know, is, is it an endangered species, send it back to the forest. Uh, <laughs> You know, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm sure he um, he does it out of rebellion, leaving his hair s stupid looking. Uh, you know, it's like uh, the no, he does it because he's rich and uh, whatever he is, he can. That's it. Well, he uh, rebellion. Like it's him. no, it's arrogant rebellion. It. The more people complain about his hair, the, the more he will rebel. keep it. The rich don't rebel. What do they do? What I just said. They are. I am what that I am. That is rebellion. No, who are they rebelling against? Others that make fun of it and complain about it. Well, that's not rebellion. You're spite. You're trying to spite them. I know, but they're above them. They're elites. So it is not the rebellion. It is 
they are they are making if it were fashion okay if it were fashion okay so it, they it, would be they the are ones who are they, dictating the fashion you know I, I have a feeling that the same rich elitists in a capitalist system like the United States if they move to let's say a more much more socialist country like Scandinavia they would be laughed at northern like nor, uh, one of the northern European Scandinavian countries and they walked around saying I'm special I should get special treatment because I'm rich That's great. and I'm famous too they would be laughed at and say sure keep keep your dreaming keep dreaming on you're delusional. Yeah. Oh, and don't forget. You never heard the fairy tale about the... Uh, pay up your fair share in taxes. Uh, the emperor had no clothes. Well, that's a very famous fairy tale. Well, there you go. I mean, it's the same thing. He was naked, but he didn't, he didn't know he was... I mean, he didn't want to appear naked, and the people around him didn't want to say so. Because you don't do that to the rich. You defer to them. In other words, they want their asses kissed. That's correct. Just like uh, anybody who is a celebrity in the United States, a, a, a celebrated person in the spotlight, uh, whether uh, entertainment industry, whatever, they, um, they want you to kiss their ass. These people have lost, if they ever had it, their humility. That's why if you try to talk to them, you're lucky if you get one word back. And also... Um, Would you like my autograph? Even if you're even How about a photo. Even if you're on uh, TMZ, if you're one of the TMZ regulars, they get blown off quite often uh -huh. by celebrities and stars, and and they're on TV on TMZ. Was it uh, 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 um, what the hell's his name? Uh, um, Levin. Um, Levin. His last name is. Um, Shit, I hate when I go blank. Anyway, the guy who who originally came from the People's Court, a lawyer, is a lawyer from New York. Uh, 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 um, anyway, it's not important. If they blow off somebody from a Hollywood gossip show, of course they're not even gonna. We're we're we'll be invisible, you know, uh, uh, unless you want to buy. An autograph, uh, you know, buy their eight by ten photo with an yeah. autograph and pay through the nose for it. Yeah. Even athletes, famous athletes, are like that, charging hundreds of dollars to autograph your. Uh, like Alex Rodriguez wants a a, a a big sum of money to autograph uh, your baseball bat or something, some bullshit like that. So oh, yeah, these hurt. people are. I guess this used to be an honor in the old days. To do things like Babe Root spent a lot of time with his fans, and he See? didn't charge him one penny. There you go. And he loved kids, and he felt it was an honor for him to be the Sultan of SWAT back then. It was an honor, you know. And, Sultan uh, of he, SWAT. And he respected the people who uh, uh, yeah. who loved them, you know. And uh, the, the the now there's no respect. It's like. Uh, you know, but look, people still pay the super high ripoff prices for tickets. They still go to the to the stadium. No, Americans do not boycott. They still support the industries, and that's why they're not humble anymore. Because they know you you suckers are still gonna go and pay hundreds of dollars for a ticket and show up. You saw with the Merryweather Pack all. Fight. Manny Pacquiao that's, that's and uh, Meriwether. Today. Yeah, they just, it was like an exhibition. They just you know? danced around and yeah, all right. $400 million. Well, in the, in the uh, Bellator MMA fighting, there was a long promoter fight between um, um, uh, Ken Shamrock, uh, veteran legend in MMA, uh, uh, um, Ken Shamrock and uh, and Mr. Slice, Ooh, his Mr. last Slice. name is Slice, um, and um, it was short. It was a very short fight. It didn't go long at all. They got it over with. 
and uh, people were very disappointed. And, really? it, and it was promoted for a long time. You know, so uh, uh, um, you know, it's uh, it's all about the the mamu. You know, it, it's a, it's it's a, it's a, in this society, especially with Republicans in charge, it's money over people and the planet. Completely, totally. But they don't care if they take take out the planet and the environment, and, and uh, they destroy. Well, Jesus is coming. Agriculture and food supplies. He's going to take know. care of all of that. He's going to take care of them too. You know, they're going to all be whisked up to heaven. Each given a brand new harp. To play? Oh yeah, Republicans are are they they look at themselves as being real Christians. Yeah. Yeah, real Christians with all that hatred and racism and 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 no compassion for the poor. And one important word. And no empathy. What? Judgment. Well, yeah, they want to they they want to be like Judge Dredd. They want to execute you if you're gay. Uh, you know, if you're gay, if you're poor. Yeah, they, they, they want you to die, uh, and uh, if you're black, they don't, I mean, they can care less about you, and, uh, and but yes, they, but, but the they, Bible says, if you judge, you condemn yourself. But they sure care about that, that Judge fertile, not, lest you be judged. They sure care about that fertilized egg. And God that, says, vengeance is mine. I don't agree with uh, being a pacifist. Uh, uh, passive, well, that's your opinion. Pacifist liberalism. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Now, uh, 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 what do you call it? fertilized egg? Uh, uh, an embryo? They they care a hell of a lot about that. They don't care about the child once it's born. No, they do not. Um, because they will not take care of it. Because they'll cut all the social programs. What happened in 1996? When Mr. New Gingrich and Mr. Bill Clinton, I feel your pain, got together and changed welfare as we know it, which program, along with the others, of course, did they really put their sights on? WIC! Women and children! So how could you feel somebody's pain if you're, if you're down social services for the poor? Bingo. Isn't that a contradiction? It's not all about that. It's a contradiction. Okay. It's about saving money on social programs so they can give more to the big corporations and the rich as tax breaks. That's what it's about. Well, uh, I just want to say greetings. Hello to my near dear friend in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. And to, uh, my Facebook um, group administrators, uh, Sash Boyle, Joe Stebbins, um, and uh, the rest. Um, I don't have that many, but you know, it, it's it's like this. How can I put it? Uh, in order to be an administrator, you have to be proactive. You have to upload important, applicable information. You have to post important, applicable information. You have to show your face and be active. You know, you, you can't just post everything on your own private profile, uh, thinking that uh, somebody famous is going to like uh, discover you, like Justin Bieber was discovered by Ellen DeGeneres on YouTube. You know, there's only one superstar. I bet you're sorry about that. A fucking side. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's only one superstar, king of the universe on cyberspace, and that's yours truly, James P. Madonna, with his co-host, oh. the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman. So if you don't, if you're not d act active on a daily basis, then I'm sorry you can't be administrator. Uh, I mean, we love to keep you as a member, but you got to be active. So. Uh, you know, um, uh, but I do, I am very appreciative of Sash Boyle and, and, and Joe Stebbins. Um, but, um, 
the balance of the administrators uh, haven't really uh, done their job. And I'm very disappointed. And I'm also disappointed at many of the members who uh, put everything on their own page and not on the groups. I mean, uh, I really, I mean, I really don't like dead wood sitting on a shelf collecting dust. I like proactive progressives. Proactive people. Remember, um, well then again, hey, a bunch of no talents, uh, uh, assholes, jabronis get discovered rich and famous. We just mentioned Justin Bieber. So maybe, maybe some schmuck, some putts, uh, like one of yourselves will get discovered before old James P. Madonna because you know why? I don't hold back. I pull no punches, no holds barred, I tell the truth. The system, society, seems to not want to deal with the real truth. It's a very bitter pill to swallow. So if you are, if you are a truth seeker, like a Jesse Ventura, um, people like that, um, you will uh, always be controversial, naturally, naturally controversial. Not, you don't have to try, like a shock jock, like a Howard Stern, you know. If you, if you, if you stick to the truth, you automatically will be controversial, automatically, in today's society. But anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. I know you feel a little fatigued today. We were a little long-winded. Um, I, um, I don't. I didn't. I didn't have any any appliances die on me recently, so uh, I didn't. I don't have any uh, inductees per se in the Chisler's Hall of Shame. What is that thing? Is that anything? Or no. That bottle? Yeah. Oh, that's my uh, uh, homeopathic allergy formula. <coughs> oh. Just in case I get an attack. Regarding the Confederate flag honors racists, not heroes, in the column by editorial page editor Alfred P. Doblin, he states that the Old South, like parts of our nation's capital, was built on the back of black slaves. We don't get off easy in New Jersey and the rest of the 13 colonies were built on the backs and by the hands of enslaved people. Hey, what about the railroads? The, uh, the, the poor downtrodden folks sure helped build the railroads in America, right? We imported coolies to do that. That was the derogatory uh, word, term they had for for Ch pe Chinese people yeah. that worked the railroads, and there were some. I'm I'm assuming there were blacks working, working on the railroad. Well, what, remember the old song story? If they were able to get the job. Yeah, remember John Henry, the the steel because there was no affirmative action in those days. Yeah, yeah. rail drive. He was a rail driving man. You mean John Henry? John Henry was big. John Henry was strong. He was a, a yeah. Rail drive. Steel driving man. Steel, well, he had a contest between him, yeah, with the machine. him and the machine. He lost. He lost to the machine. Kasparov, the grandmaster in chess, also lost the big blue. The IBM computer. The modern day John Henry story, yeah. But anyway, anyway, yeah, yeah, I could, I could, I could, I could believe that. Because all those, um, um, all those uh, rich white plant, uh, sharecropper, uh, whatever, those those crackers that own the plantations, they, they didn't really get their hands dirty, right? Uh, absolutely not. But that was okay. Yeah. You see, lazy rich are okay, but lazy poor, no, 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 no. Well, I believe the Civil War was not all about slavery. I think it was about economics. 
Well, what do you think was economics at that time? The South had a plantation economy, the North had an industrial one. Industrial one, one yeah. yeah. So the the South economy. wanted to keep its plantation economy. Oh, but the many South. states didn't want to have slavery. Oh, you mean anymore. you mean you mean the North wanted to put industry in the no, South? No, not put industry in the South. They wanted to do away with that kind of economics. I don't believe. I don't. I, I don't. I don't believe that the United States government of the North had that much compassion and empathy for the black slaves. I don't believe it. Well, they, that, that the war. Well. It they was actually two years into the war. They didn't care about when the, Abraham Lincoln wrote, put in the Emancipation Proclamation. They didn't care about the Native Americans, the uh, the U.S. Army from Washington D.C. from the North. Well, nobody had corralled them to be making a living for them. Did they? Well, they just they just took away their land and stuck them on reservations. I know, but it's a different thing. But it's still like it's still a form of. Um, uh, racism. No, it's a form of economics again. Right. Well, you're one of the land. Ex but you're exploiting people that are not like you, people of color. Yeah. yeah. But the the, the, the the slaves, that was a different story altogether. And even if this even if the war didn't start out that way, that's the way it ended. Yeah. Okay? Freeing the slaves. Even after slavery was abolished in states north of the Mason-Dixon line, northern textile manufacture, shipping, and financial institutions were dependent on the southern econo economy and thus on slavery. The vile, evil institution infected the whole country. We may not be flying the Confederate flag, but we have to accept that our state, New Jersey, and its wealth were also dependent on slavery. Finding a way forward is indeed difficult, but it cannot be done without acknowledging that slavery was a national sin. Oh yeah. Well, Billy Morrill told me Thursday that uh, you know, and I knew this right along. That he said that uh, that black Africans captured and sold their own people in the slave trade. And I says, yeah, that's true, but that, that that doesn't trivialize the slave trade. I mean, that just means, yeah, yeah, they it's they just sold money making. That's all. They sold their own people out, but aren't the Uncle Toms like? Uh, Carlson and you know uh, aren't the, the the Republican blacks selling out their own people too? It would seem so. Herman Cain of, of the of the past and, Tom, and and Carlson Ben Carson Ben Car Carson 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 I'm sorry Ben Carson of today yeah. they're selling out their own people. They don't think so. Uh, Michelle Malkin the uh, the tan skin uh, Southeast Asian polit uh, Republican. In Hawaii, I think she's selling out her own people. Even though I got a lot of heat on Twitter for for making statements for criticizing her, a lot of tea baggers came down on me for it. Uh, do you care? Well, they got all irate, but they didn't have so? any. They didn't have any facts to back up their so their debate. They just was named. They would call me names. So, did you worry about that? No, I said. I said you probably like her because she's pretty. That's why you do. Call Jesus Christ a wine bibber, uh, 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 associating with whores, and so what? Name calling is as good as the person doing the name calling. Yeah. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't solve anything. It doesn't accomplish anything. Well, it does to certain people who are sensitive to it. Well, it mean it means that you're you're not. You can't win a debate. No, well, you're not supposed to debate them. They're God doesn't do it. They're undebatable. God has uh, has given the incorrigible a free reign because they cannot be taught. They are unteachable. Proof, perfect proof for that. Jesus only really 
reached 120 people when he was alive. Bingo. And he preached to thousands. Well, what I mean is, they did. If if winning debates and um, getting the word out was the number one priority, then uh, if Jesus was here today, he would be advertising all over the internet and all over the major networks, like all no, day and all night. Like uh, it, it is. I mean, if he wanted to get the word out to everyone. That's not why he came. Right. You know, like, like this you ever is seen, a mis this is a mistake. You ever see drug, your, your so-called Christians keep making. You ever see drug company commercials? They're always on. Well, if, you know, if that was the objective of Jesus. Well, it wasn't. It would be like that. He came for a certain people and that was it. He right. did preach to multitudes, but those multitudes uh, the pa parables that he gave them were not to be understood by them. Well, that's not a good thing for somebody to do that wants to be a hit, like s a Jesus Christ superstar. Yeah. Well, even Paul. That's not what he was about. Even Paul reaching reaching out to the Gentiles. He he was he 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 didn't he didn't go hog wild either. Because. It is the message and not what they do with it. You're not out there soul-saving, proselytizing, or evangelizing. Trying to save souls. That's not why he came. Okay. He came to speak to only a certain amount of people. Certain people. He taught in the synagogues of his day. He was a Jew. But he came for the lost ten tribes. The message was given out. Fair warnings were given out. They were not understood. And that's how it was supposed to be. As Jesus did when the uh, when he, the, 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 the apostles came to him and asked him, etc., he told them, he said, that these, the parables are not for them to understand. They are for you. You know, I, I learned something new in this documentary from last night. That I the, hope it was good. The Ark of the Covenant. When the Ark of the Covenant ended up after Solomon's uh, temple was built, it was David's son. The Ark of the Covenant, after it was put into Solomon's temple, it was never mentioned again in it the Old stolen. Testament. It was stolen. It was stolen. After that, it was It was stolen by a mentioned. Babylon or uh, Assyria, I believe. Okay. It was stolen. Yeah. It was a, it was a wooden rectangular box with gold, with gold. And in the box were the Ten Commandments, Aaron's staff, and the manna from and the manna. The manna. That's correct. But remember, Mr. Huchigu, uh from that movie, uh, he was out looking for that. Oh, uh, Indiana, Indiana Jones. Jones. Yeah. That's true. So you thought the Nazis stole it. It's like people that search for the Holy Grail, which was the cup that Jesus used during the Last Supper to drink his wine. The Bible does say that. And, and the spear. They say Germany has the spear. The they, Roman spear. The Bible does say pierced his, that it will be found. Jesus' ribs, I mean, side, yeah. The ark will be found. Um, so, um, we'll see. All right, finish up. Pitching himself as a doer in a field of talkers, Bobby Jingle declared his candidacy. The, 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 the Indian Republican, right? For the 2016 Republican presidential nomination. Kimbo Slice. I'm sorry. I had a brain freeze. I couldn't remember his first name. Kimbo Slice versus Ken Shamrock. 
Bellator MMA, it went very, very short, very disappointing. I just remembered. Harrison Ford, of course, was in the, uh, in the Raiders of the Lost Ark. But anyway, so, uh, 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 Jindal, very He's annoying, it, baby. very annoying with his statements, his arrogant statements, and his face is typical Republican douchebag looking face. You know? It's a long shot effort, and his prospects will depend in a large measure on his continued courtship of evangelical voters. Well, Bobby Jinder, he reminds me of the story, true story about India, where they just, if you're homeless, and they just walk over, walk right over you, they ignore you. But L like hey, in New York City, you know. Let's take care of those cows. Those cows are sacred. Uh, oh yeah. Well, if you're Hindu, yeah. Yeah. Or don't, don't mess with the cow. That's but okay. if you're human and you're poor, step over you. Step over you or step on you. <laughs> or they, uh, they even, uh, they even. Even a, uh, um, a homeless drunken man was swallowed by a python and nobody helped him. Yeah. Oh, they really, oh, they really, disgusting. really, they are, they are something else. We have a bunch of great talkers running for president, Jingle said. <laughs> great talkers. We've had enough of talkers. Oh, yeah, sure. It's time for a doer. A doer. You mean doer scotch? I'm not running for president to be somebody. Oh, man. I'm running for president to do something. Hey, I'm going to do something. I'm going to be a door. Uh, excuse me. An Oxford-educated son of Indian immigrants, <sighs> Jindal can point to a political career filled with many achievements in a short time. Yeah, he wants to do all right. Probably cast... Well, I know what he wants to do. He wants to cast the poor into slavery or, or let them die. Mm -hmm. Typical Republican agenda. Make them some government smaller, you know? Mm. Make it smaller, unless unless it has to do with corporate subsidies and the military budget. Oh, make that bigger. Make, make that bigger. Bigger. Well, because they're 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 getting paid off. In short time, a position as state health secretary when he was 24 years old. Election to Congress at 32, and election as governor four years later. Jindal intends to present himself as the youngest candidate with the longest resume. Was he governor of Louisiana? Yeah. I believe it's Louisiana. Yeah. You can have a long resume. You can have a resume as long as the, the Great Wall of China. That doesn't mean he's a nice person. Well, if he's only 32 years of old uh, age today, he's not even eligible to be president. So he must be more than that. Yeah, well... Got to be 35, baby. If he's a Republican, he's only for the rich. It doesn't change. It doesn't change at all. There's some uh, some Republican woman who looks like an, 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 uh, an old... She looks like Angela Lansbury. She's got a, she's got a miserable looking face. Ooh. Is bitching about uh, Bernie Sanders. She's calling him uh, a socialist. Yeah. So what? So what? Capitalism never did a damn thing for the poor and the middle class. So what if he's a socialist? You know. Hey, all those socialist countries in Europe. Looking mighty fine, aren't they? Do you remember that? Remember that banner that said the most prosperous countries happen yeah. to be socialist countries in Europe? Yeah. For prosperity? Yeah. And the U.S. didn't even make the list. And if I, uh, 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 I don't know exactly what happened, but I do know that once upon a time, India would not let other countries invest and take over their lands and take over their businesses and et cetera, et cetera. Now I think they are, you know, with Monsanto and everything like that, but they used to not do that. Every country, if it wants to be prosperous, has got to do that. It's got, you can't go selling off your water. You can't go selling off this, that, and the other thing and hope to be able to be a good country. Yeah. Or a state. Well, the, the, the Latin American countries that have privatized the utilities, the okay. water, and the power, yeah. they've had nothing but trouble. Exactly. 
you're giving away money to some I private mean, idiot. I mean, the 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 the, uh, the cities would black out. You know, uh, uh, no, uh, people wouldn't have electricity for hours. Or the water would stop. There always is constant accidents happening and repairs being done. I know um, of two areas in Latin America are always having those blackouts, you know, yeah. um, because of privatization, it never works. They try to do it in New Jersey. Christine, Christy Whitman, Whitman tried to privatize... Um, Christine the, the Whitless. Whitless, Titless, but both actually. She tried to privatize the Division of Motor Vehicles and that was a fiasco. Yeah. That was a blunder. It's still a fiasco tonight. So, you know... Hey, we just sold the lottery. Really? Yeah, didn't make any money. Chris Christie it's private, privatized now. Privatized yeah. it. Does oh. that mean people are not going to get their winnings? No, it has nothing to do with that. Oh, okay. It has to do with the state losing money. Well, yeah, they want to We lose money and then we cut taxes on the rich. How the hell are we going to raise revenue? Where's the revenue going to come from? Yeah. Maybe, maybe doing what they, doing the opposite of what they promise in their campaign, and 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 raising the middle class taxes. Well, that they do. They broaden the base. Property taxes. They broaden the base. The taxes and breaks that they give to the rich are made up by those below. Right. If they are made up. That's probably but right now, Republican governors and etc. don't want it made up. They want it cut so that they can't pay public servants. They can't do this, that, and the other thing. That's they want government to fail. To fail. They, 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 but they're setting it up to fail. Correct. That's probably why the sales tax is 7% in New Jersey. Because they, the consumption tax is, uh, is, is, is the little guy ends up paying this con consumption tax. That's correct. That's correct. I just paid seven percent on a purchase. Yeah, it's a, a purchase in Pennsylvania, mind you. Really? Yeah. I had to pay sales taxes on it. Well, what the hell's going on? Yeah, you buy something, your money electronically goes out of state yeah. to a company out of state, and you end up having to pay New Jersey sales, sales tax. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little, sounds a little illogical, isn't it? That is illogical, sir. Your, your money, your money is flying through the, through the, uh, the wires, the, uh, um, the, um, fiber optic uh, cables into another state. Why are you paying sales tax in, in New Jersey? All right. Eh. Jindal is citing an extensive background in public policy and government. Wonderful. We're going to take a break now for lunch. It is time for the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman's gastronomic delight, known as lunch. And we will uh, be joined by uh, uh, the Bible verses of how to defeat a conservative. Simply hit the pause button, read and learn. And then after that, our commercial voiceover specialist William Hamilton Morrow III for his promo and words of wisdom Ooh. and uh, then we'll be back for the balance of the show so uh, you know when when it rains and it's it overcast I always think about seafood I guess the the water makes me think about seafood so I have some nice frozen whiting fillets at home and I, I, I already made a fish sandwich on 12 grain uh, bread toast before, and it was excellent. No breading, just pure fish. Mm. You know, I could have got the cod, but the whiting mm. was cheaper. Not bad, though. You know, hey, it's from the ocean. Mm. It's from the ocean. It's still seafood. Mm. So, uh, mm. we'll see it. You know, some... Uh, when I used to work in seafood, some uh, some po folks from the po neighborhoods they couldn't pronounce whiting. They called it whitening. whitening. Can I have some? <laughs> Can I have some whitening? Sir? Could, could you clean me up some whitening? <laughs> whitening. Those are those little things. What the hell? You know. What 
Are you kidding me? Some requested the skinny little ones. They wanted me to take the bone out and everything. Leave the head on. Screw that. I'm so glad I don't deal with the general public anymore. I hate them. You know, Freddie Blassie was right when he says he, he never cared too much for the fans. Now I know why. They're annoying as all hell, man. They always are, always will be. Hi, this is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need newsletter censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard-hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye-bye. Okay, we're back. Thank you very much, William Hamilton Morrow III, for your doing promo and words of wisdom. Oh, I just want to have a moment of silence for the... Um, unexpected uh, death of uh, professional wrestling uh, legend and Hall of Famer, the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Also, uh, uh, actors uh, Dick Van Patten and Patrick, Patrick McNee from The Avengers died. Okay. Yep. American Dream, Dusty Rhodes. Moment of silence. I know this is late, me doing this. But honestly, we got so much on our plate, but, you know, better late than never. Okay, um, we were discussing off the air uh, about uh, the little slut, uh, Bristol Palin, getting an award recently for her speeches on abstinence. She has been getting paid very handsomely for these public speeches on abstinence. Just say no to sex. Big deal. You know, of course, if it wasn't for her mother being Sarah Palin, she would just be just another one of many tens of thousands of uh, t young teenage girls who got pregnant. She wouldn't be getting an award. She wouldn't be making hundreds of thousands of dollars getting in front of a camera and saying uh, don't have sex, wait till you're married. Abstinence this and abstinence that. I'm sure she's... Abstinence makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> no, that's, yeah, that's absence. Well, I'm sure she's getting banged by someone now while she's preaching abstinence. Um, you know, um, um... Well, it didn't work for her. A it, a when her mommy was preaching abstinence. I wonder if she hits the bottle just like her mother does. Uh, the, the old bottle of hooch, right? 
Gucci Gucci. Yeah. So anyway, eh, let us return to our readings. Sink our teeth into these readings for the balance of this week's show. Buddy boy. A Univision network is dropping the Miss USA pageant. Oh yeah, you want uh, Donald Trump won't allow anyone any any of them to to play golf on his golf course. <laughs> and the company says it will cut all business ties with Donald Trump in a spiraling controversy over comments the Republican presidential candidate made about Mexican immigrants. Am I doing a good Trump? He's got that little puckering sour. All right. No, it's usually like this. Like a goldfish. Like he's ready to suck off one of the Koch brothers. Well, he don't need it. He's a multi-billionaire. Right. He's got 8.9 billion. Eight? 8.9 Billion. Oh, oh he's net, that, he, net worth. Net, net worth. He's that wealthy? Oh. That's what he says. That, but but he can only afford to pay the the people cheering him on fifty dollars a head. Yeah. He can only afford fifty dollars a head. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Big spender. Univision said on Thursday that it would pull the plug on its Spanish language coverage of the pageant July twelfth by its Unimas network. It also has severed its business relationship with the Miss Universe organization, which produces the Miss USA pageant. Okay. Because of what it called insulting remarks about Mexican immigrants by Trump. Doesn't surprise me. A part owner of Miss Universe. Oh, he's a part owner. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best, Trump said during his presidential campaign kickoff speech last week. They are sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They are rapists. His remarks drew official condemnation from the governments of Mexico, Guatemala, and Venezuela. So he's, he's profiling these people south of the border. Yeah. Generalizing. I mean, I don't know how many rapists, uh, you know, are coming in as immigrants, but uh, Trump well, I know, says... I, I know there is a so-called war on drugs going on. Well, yeah, that's that's a whole different And the drugs of are manufactured and smuggled into the country from and the south. And they got the cartels down there. From the south. Yeah. I know crime is high, but they're drug-related. Uh, they are also related to something that Republicans dismiss entirely. Economics. Hey man, it's if it's easier to go to the corner and make thousand dollars selling drugs to your buddies than it is to go to work for thirty cents an hour, what are you going to have? A young, a young minority person of color, if usually, if you're smart, you think about it for a second and you go. Why should I bust my ass for for this chicken feed chump change and and get nowhere in life and still end up still stay in the ghetto when if I could sell drugs I could be loaded with with money even though it's a high risk occupation mm -hmm. I could be loaded yeah. instead of busting my ass for, you know, like be a migrant, let's say a migrant farm worker, getting what you said. Right. Getting chicken feed for pay. You exactly. know. So this is how it is. This is what happens. And in Colombia, the uh, 
the cartels they they supply many many jobs uh, to poor they're job creators to poor no for real I know to poor Colombians yeah these poor Colombians rely on these jobs coming from the cartels and also you have this I just saw a uh, a video on Facebook last night right. of this kid who goes to some school somewhere he got on the honor roll right and he got beat up by all his friends or whatever he got the shit beat out of him because he's smart he, he's an that's what you got in some of these neighborhoods he's an you know? achiever exactly yeah if you're not if you're not if you're in school in these neighborhoods ghettos and, and you're and you do the right thing and you you're an achiever or you work hard and you get you get perfect grades and you're on the honor roll you, you you're not respected if you're if you're a gangbanger and a thug you're respected so this kid was was trying to do positive things for his life mm -hmm. and they and they persecuted him for it and they beat him up that's correct mm -hmm. and that's why a lot of those uh, people you know uh, coming from such neighborhoods and such attitudes and everything they quit school early and then they never go anywhere well the system that we live in that these the elitist fat cats created they made this negative environment. They created this this negative environment for people of color, for and for the poor people, for the poor. They, 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 they force them into this because there's no options. There's no. There's no good choices to be made. And then they ha you have the other uh, <coughs> option of uh, uh, env in environment. It cities themselves cause problems yeah we weren't meant to live in high-rises millions of people in we weren't city. we weren't meant to be crammed into a concrete Correct. jungle a concrete and asphalt and steel jungle they did experiments with rats and yeah. mice and etc and they cramped them into the places like that and everything and they became cannibals they became violent and this, this is what happened yeah we were meant to have our own plot of land and our own vine humans were meant to commune with nature and the flora and the fauna and 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 to produce our own food and control our own destinies and a way to make a living and all this you know with nature we, we, we were supposed to be part of the intricate web of mother nature Mm. Not a city dweller depending on the man, the man, the fat cat for our survival. Working for, 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 for cash. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now, um, um, what the hell was I going to say? I digressed. You digress too much. The farmer has freedom, but the city dweller doesn't. And that's what happens. Well, he owns his job. He owns that's what his, happens. He owns his way of making, mm -hmm. making a living producing his own food. Right. I mean, now they discourage the little guy from growing things. Correct. Collecting rainwater, having a chicken coop, growing and, vegetables. And guess what happened to the subsidies that were meant to go to the small farmers to help them, etc.? They go to Big Agra now! In the same old siphon up good shit. Yeah. You see? They, I mean, the Republicans expect uh, Americans to be um, patriotic and all this bullshit, but but the way they treat the veterans—that's what I was going to say that I forgot. Uh, the way they treat veterans lately, treating them like like shit, like garbage. They should have died on the battlefield and made it easy on us. Because then they don't have to take care of. That's it. correct. But but being that social services, when you help the poor, is such a a tiny percentage of the overall budget compared to military spending and corporate welfare subsidies and interest it's such a you're right it's such a tiny percentage of that pie they are still they still ravenously are obsessed 
with but, targeting the poor and eliminating that little two percent but guess what of the budget now they are saying it's more than the military it's more it's 70 70 programs or something or maybe even more, more than that but all these programs are more than the military and everything the social program you know what else they're saying you've seen the pie chart didn't you yeah okay tea baggers still believe that the rich are, are are paying most of the taxes are burden and the middle class are not who cares but who cares? But I don't if even think. Supposed to pay those taxes. But, pay them. But the but the rich are not paying their fair share in taxes. They haven't been for forty years. Right. But that's the general idea. If you make more money, you pay more taxes. Bingo. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, some of the speeches made by Teddy Roosevelt. He mentioned the words progressive tax yeah. system. That's sort of started out with you. We read it last week, I, I believe. Uh, or did I put it in my article? I don't know. It appears somewhere. What do you? The, the first income tax, somewhere it's around 1897 or something like that, taxed people making four thousand dollars. What do you want to do? Tax tax two percent. Tax the people making less money. And the 98 percent of Americans didn't pay nothing. Right. I mean that's what it's all about. You're making my big bucks. You pay taxes. It's and it's the same thing. Common sense. Capital gains is income. I don't give a shit what they do in bookkeeping. It is income, and it should be today Listen, tax thirty nine point six percent or whatever. When you it is. purchase, when you purchase an investment like let's say real estate, and and let's say the real estate has a building on it, and let's say you pay, you pay. Um, hey. Dirt so a dirt cheap sum like fifty thousand. Let's say you pay fifty thousand for it, and ten years go by, and you turn around and you sell it, and you get a million dollars for the whole thing, lock, stock, and barrel. That's a capital gain. That's income. No, it's not. It's lazy money. Well, they they should be paying taxes on that. Is what I'm saying. That's correct. The amount of taxes is what it is today. Thirty nine point six. Now Ronald Reagan. But of course, used, so you would like them to pay ninety, no? Ronald, yeah, yeah, the original, you know. the original. Thank now you. Ronald Reagan w used to bitch and moan about the capital gains uh, tax. Well, they got it down to fifteen percent. Used to be twenty-five, I think. I'll say this, son. I'll Damn. say, I'll say that. Okay, let's continue. It's easy to knock Donald Trump. Sure it is. Because he's so visible. Yeah, he's got his hair is his trademark now. On the other hand, he is a negotiator. Master of the deal. An astute businessman. Yeah, he's very shrewd. And a person who gets the job done. That he is. Whatever job he has his focus on. His qualities and achievements are far above those of our current Congress and President. Trump can and will restore the United States to the greatness it was by dealing with the leaders of other countries oh, really? with strength and integrity. Okay, he will restore. Those are the magic keywords I'm doubting. He will restore the U.S. to his greatness. He's a Republican man. He's not going to restore any greatness. He's the right choice, at the right time, and by no means a clown. Well, he's definitely the driver of the 2016 Republican clown bus. <laughs> and Chris Christie is at the back of the bus to keep the bus stable yeah, on, on the road. They, yeah, in case they have to go through some snow or something. And now Chris Christie has his own campaign website. I heard it on uh, on the local news today. Well, I believe this week he will announce. Maybe Tuesday. Oh, he will announce it. <laughs> the writer shows an abysmal, abysmal? ignorant, abys abysmal, 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 ignorant. Pepto abysmal. 
about how our governments or any capitalist government works. In a socialist government, the means of production are owned by the government, and its resources come from the profits generated by those enterprises. In a capitalist system, the means of production are in private hands, and the government gets the resources with which to provide the services that its business enterprises and its consumers need from taxation. Thus, it would make sense to have a businessman head of the government in a socialist society where the object of government is to maximize profit for itself. But this is not the rule in capitalism. In a democratic capitalist society, the president must be skillful in dealing with Congress and other government entities. When Trump says, I'm really rich, does that mean we could simply pick the richest man in the United States and make him our president? That would be Bill Gates. At least Bill Gates has the common sense of admitting that when the rich pay more taxes, the economy booms. At least he admitted that. I'm no fan of Bill Gates, but because you know he's in bed with Monsanto, but. That's pretty important. But Bill Gates has the good sense to know that he's not qualified to be president. Well, he, does, he may not want the stress. This cannot be said about the egomaniacal clown Donald Trump. He's very egomaniacal. I mean, um, he's also... He also doesn't need to work a day in his life if he's a multi-billionaire. But he needs that attention. He's an attention whore. Ex whore. Uh, I apologize for Whoa, using whore. the word because I get <laughs> reprimanded for using the word whore. But yes, he is an attention whore. Uh -huh. He's a whore. He's a whore. Change of uh, venue here. You can change the pace. Change of paste. Paste, tomato paste. Tomato paste, yes. I always say, well, if he, he said venue, but normally I say that when he says change of pace, tomato paste. Six months ago, my best friend's fiance raped me. My best friend's fiance raped. Uh, it's a girl talking. He is a man I've known for many years. Uh, and I didn't see it coming. Didn't see it coming? Nope. Hold on. No pun intended. Didn't see it coming? Uh, it was real rape? Or was it consensual sex and then she regretted it later? Huh. I became pregnant. Oh, God. The, 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 Clock gets thicker, huh? And had a miscarriage. Well, that's good. Don't have to abort it now. I recently had to have a hysterectomy. From damage incurred from the rape and the miscarriage. What the hell does he got? A, a schlong like an elephant? A donkey schlong. Donkey schlong? He like rammed it in there and, and, and the heart, uh, torpedoed her? How did she get all this damage from copulation? And why did she... Did she report it with the police? I never went to the police. Or pressed charges. You know what? A lot of women that you see crying in, in public and on TV shows, they bring it upon themselves. I hate to say it, a lot of people bring their, their problems upon themselves. And very few people are aware of the whole horrific experience. I have been beyond traumatized. First of all, 
you hit him over the head with something and you say, no, no. What? There's more to the story. I know it. My best friend knows nothing about it. And I have been unable to face her since that awful night. We text now and then. She keeps asking me why I have suddenly dropped out of her life. I don't know if I can stupid, tell her the stupid, truth. Stupid ash. You get a you get you get raped and you have to have a hysterectomy because of the rape and you keep it a secret? This woman is something's wrong with this woman. We were as close as sisters, and I honestly miss her like crazy. That's why I can't be a shrink. I can't. But I can't be part of her life if this monster is in it. So the monster got away with it. As long as she keeps quiet, the monster got away with it. I do not feel sorry. I am sorry, but I do not sympathize with her. Do I tell the truth? Yes, you tell the truth. Or do I just shut her out of my life? See, this is this is a namby pamby pacifist. This is somebody with no spine. This has taken an emotional toll on me. I'm sorry, I, I cannot empathize with you. I cannot. Sorry. Here's dear Abby's answer. I'm waiting. Find the nearest rape and sexual assault treatment center in your province, the woman's from Canada, and make an appointment immediately. File a police report. I know it's after the fact, but file it. You need more help than anyone can give you in a letter. And the people there can counsel you not only on what to do, but also what your options are. Now she had damage down below that resulted in a hysterectomy. That's also physical assault too, aside from the classification of a rape, assault and battery, or salt and pepper. You know, you know what I noticed? How come when you go to a, a fancy restaurant, the waiter? comes up and asks you if you would like some fresh ground pepper and then he takes out this humongous yeah yeah the big guy big tall looks like the, a giant bishop on the chest and a big tall wooden pepper mill where he's his hand is all the way out here and he's going he's going crunch 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 and he walks away this big friggin pepper mill and he's just put putting a little bit on leave the damn thing on my table I want more black pepper <laughs> but it's always the gigantic wooden pepper mill which I, I always wanted to have one, but I didn't feel like paying all that money for a wooden pepper mill. But someday I'll have one. It's a sign of class. Well, you can have smaller ones, you know. Huh? You can get smaller ones. Yeah, but I want the restaurant. I like that the big one because I want to be able to, to get my hand you far. Know how much you got? It probably cost you an arm and a leg to fill it up. Oh, you mean you got peppercorn? That whole. I don't know how big the compartment is. I don't know, a lot of peppercorns, huh? I think so. Oh, uh, gotta love them. Old-fashioned jingle bells. Your friend should absolutely be informed about what she's getting into if she marries your rapist. That's another thing. It's her duty to report all this. But I do not recommend that you tell her until you have strong emotional support when is she, she side when you. is she supposed to tell her after she goes to counseling yeah it's easy it's easy dear Abby this is what you do I, I gotta magnify hey friends I hate to break break the news to you but something bad happened something really really bad happened your fiance raped me and uh did damage to my to my innards to my giblets that resulted in a hysterectomy I just gotta tell you this she can either do it by email voicemail or she could do it in person I would say it would be too 
it would be too uh, frightening for her to do it in person. So I would send her a nice juicy email, which is good because you have a record of, you know, of telling the, the woman you save mm -hmm. it. You know. Okay, there's your advice from James P. Madonna. Hey, I like this. Does it, does it, does it? Slight. But the, do you hear me? Uh, Slight. Slight? How about now? Is it good? Well, that's because now you're, you're raising your voice. Okay. That's it? Well, that's it, that, but we have some more here. Ah. We have Amy Dickinson to contend with. Tomato now. paste. All right, go ahead. We have always been very close to our son. But ever since he has been in a serious relationship with a woman, uh -oh. he seems to have put her first and on a pedestal. We feel like we don't know him anymore. Because he's getting laid. That's why you... you <laughs> I don't That's, see him so much anymore. Because he's getting laid. That's why you're playing second fiddle. He's a, he's a guy. He's going to pick the, the sex first. The little, the little pouch. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the little wet pouch. Pouch? You mean his balls? No, her pussy. That's a pouch? It's a pouch. I know it was a, it was a, ca it's a cavern shaped like the seagull. You know, vagina and going to the ovaries. It looks like a, looks like a seagull. <laughs> not when it has not been stimulated. When it has not been stimulated, it is like a. If you were able to fold a corrugated box. Oh, really? An accordion. Like a cordine. Like an accordion. Like a cordine. Like like a folding. Like Fold an old, in on a pot. Like an old-fashioned <clears throat> concertina accordion or a, or a, a camera. Folds. Yeah, one of them old type. Oh, yeah. yeah. That the one that like looked like it exploded. Yeah. The flash was like. <laughs> we have heard how sons lean toward the girl's side, and the daughters are closer to their own families. There have been horrible stories about future daughters-in-law. We are told to be careful of how we behave and what we say. I want us all to be close. How should we deal with this possible daughter-in-law? Amy's answer. You don't mention making any effort at all to get to know your son's partner. Surely he could do a better job of bringing you together. But he's not doing that, so you should. It is natural, <coughs> excuse me, for adults to create a small circle around their partner with themselves at the center. Perhaps you and your husband did that when you first got together. Ideally, you want your son to be an intimate and involved partner to his spouse. He will do this by putting her first. And you must not only let him do this, but understand that he will do this yeah, and yeah. accept that there are many positive aspects in his choice. Listen, you can't be in a serious love. It is possible to be in a serious love relationship and still maintain uh, everything that makes up you as a person, like your hobbies, your interests, your friends, <coughs> your family. You, you, you do not have to give up what makes you the individual who you are just because you're in a love relationship. Any, any woman who expects you to give those things up is very selfish and controlling. This is the mother talking. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Ah. Of the mother. The mother. The mother is a little jealous of the new a woman uh, in the son's life. Like Marie Barone of uh, Everybody Loves Raymond, the, the obsessively, uh, the obsessive Italian mother, or it could be a Jewish mother, jealous of, the, of their, their, their little boy's uh, 
significant other competing for the love. Do you want your son to be happy? Even if he's creating some distance from you? I hope the answer is yes. It's like a sick obsession. Your response should be to convey to him, we are delighted that you have found someone who makes you so happy. We would love to get to know her better. There you go. Can you come to dinner so we can get to know her? It's like if your best friend won the uh, Powerball lottery. You're supposed to be happy for that best friend. Oh, you'll probably never see that best friend again. <laughs> yeah, because he's afraid if you... If he won the Powerball. He's afraid you're going to hit him up for money. <laughs> you and that, nobody will see him again. Yeah. Oh, hey, best friend, buddy, pal of mine, by the way, remember Ralph Cramden says, I knew there was a bad by the way in there somewhere. By the way. <laughs> Your concern about this distance and silent judgment about his choices may make the disturbed distance and the tension worse. So yes, you must be careful, respectful, and open and accepting of this change in your family system, this woman might surprise you and you should do your best to loop her into your family. Right. Yeah, you can't be totally selfish as a... As a, yeah, the, as father, the, the fathers don't do this bullshit. It's the no. mothers. You, you shouldn't be totally selfish. And... Um, and be this way because it's a it's a completely different type of love you know the love the love of a family a family member or or a ch or a sibling or to sibling or, or or child to to parent parent to child it's different than the romantic love so you know you you, you gotta uh, be happy for him or her and accept the other the in-law into your family if you you don't have to you're not forced to like them or get along with them you know you sometimes it doesn't work out and your personalities clash you know but it'd be nice if everybody did get along one more for the road addressing hundreds of supporters while campaigning in Keene New Hampshire last month Senator Bernie Sanders declared let me tell you a secret we are going to win New Hampshire I would hope so it's right next to Vermont he has some reason to feel confident given that a new poll put him just 10 percentage points behind the front runner Hillary Rodham Clinton in the Democratic presidential primary in the Granite State. But before he pops the champagne corks, don't pop them yet, I have a secret of my own to share with the Senator. He may not qualify for the New Hampshire ballot as a Democrat. Really? To understand why, let's step back a bit. The U.S. Constitution gives Congress the power to set the time of federal elections, but not the manner in which political parties choose their nominees. That process is left to the states. The New Hampshire Constitution empowers the legislature to determine the qualifications for those being elected to office something in which I was closely involved when I chaired the committee with jurisdiction over the state election law while a member of the state Senate. Qualifications? He's a United States Senator. Pursuant to that power, state law makes clear that candidates must be registered members of the party now, here we go on again. whose ballot line here they wish go. to appear. Partisan politics, party first, party, party, party. This is a problem for Sanders. 
goddamn right. Who is not a registered Democrat. And I don't blame him for not being a registered Democrat. I don't blame him. One might ask why the good senator can't simply change his registration in his home state from socialist or independent to Democrat. Because then he'll be part of the problem. He'll be business as usual if he does that. The answer is that Vermont doesn't have a party registration system. So he can't. Similar issues arose with the candidates of Al Gore and George H. W. and George W. Bush. Because like Vermont, Tennessee and Texas do not register voters by party. The point is, he's running. He's running. But if they only give you the two choices, they won't be counting the ballots for you. Unless people understand a write-in. Yeah, well, they won't. They won't uh, uh, locally here in uh, Bergen County, New Jersey, in, in my town. Um, I can't. I cannot vote in. Um, I can only vote in major elections as an independent, which I am registered as. You can't uh, vote in a primary. I can't vote in a primary right. unless I'm registered with the two-party system. Right. Either or, and I. I am not. An independent. But Gore and the Bushes qualified for New Hampshire's primary ballots because they could show that they had previously appeared on ballots as a Democrat and Republicans, respectively. In his last election, Sanders likewise won the Democratic primary in Vermont. But he declined the nomination and asked that his name not appear on the general election ballot as a Democrat. In short, Sanders is not a Democrat. He ha he's only running as a Democrat so he can get the face time that he needs. Otherwise they won't give him the face time, the media. And he has not been elected as a Democrat. He's never served as a Democrat. Screw the Democrats. And cannot possibly claim, at least in New Hampshire, to be a Democrat. Screw the Republicans, too, by the way, the two-party system. Once Sanders appears at the New Hampshire Secretary of State's office to file to compete in the Democratic primary, it is quite possible that someone will challenge his declaration of candidacy and it's likely that the state ballot law commission would agree with the challenge. The commission's decisions are final. Although Sanders might be able to pursue an appeal in either state or federal court, interestingly the democratic establishment including the Clinton campaign might not want to see such a challenge succeed since it could force Sanders to run as an independent which in turn could split the left and throw the state's electoral votes to the Republican nominee mm -hmm. in November. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong! I would love to see Stan Sanders on the Democratic ballot. He is passionate, articulate about his views, and he would give Democrats a real choice. But being a Republican or a Democrat in New Hampshire is the only way to go. And I think being it's a commitment. I think being in the two-party system. Is, is part of the problem and business as usual which we need to change because the system desperately needs to change. <laughs> okay, that's one it. One small guy here. Okay, one more small reading. Uh, the weight me. 
was on the long side for a pizza. 18 hours. What? How big was this pizza? But this was an extraordinary pie. Nearly a mile long. Oh shit. It's, it's a lot of mozzarella. More than 60 of Italy's best pizza makers worked through the night to create the pizza at their Milan's World Fair. I'm, I'm getting hungry. Expo 2015, their toil was rewarded with a proclamation by Guinness World Records judge uh -huh. Saturday that it was the world's longest pizza. Expo organizers said the record-setting pie made with 1.5 tons of mozzarella What did I say? and 2 tons of tomato sauce weighed some 5 tons in all. Wow! Wow! That's a Samaguda pizza! Yeah, this deserves a victory dance, a tar Italian tarantella dance from the skeleton. Hold on. I think he's got knock knees. That's all right. He's, I think I, I, I think I started him on a regimen of uh, uh, no, chicken collagen, uh, glucosamine, con chondroitin, and such. Plus, chicken collagen is supposed to be very good. You ever see that uh, for osteoarthritis uh, commercial for nut, nut, uh, planters nuts? I think it is no. nutrition, where the Mr. Peanut says, uh, "How's your heart? It's still beating." Oh, good, he says, and then he's got a can of mixed nuts that he opens, right? And the skeleton over there grabs a whole handful and pops them down his mouth and they come out his raw ribs. Well, you know, a skeleton... Because he's got no innards. A skeleton. Oh, now, now, Al Pacino told, has a joke that he tells that is right along this line. But if the skeleton was um, um, animated, you know, it had, was able to talk and move and walk and everything and, and converse, and they and the skeleton goes into a bar. All he would have to do is the like skeleton went into a bar. Has a beer, one beer, one pint of beer would last him a very long time if he brought like a a, a, a mop with him, you know, a mop and bucket. You just keep on mopping it and squeezing it, wringing it out and re-drinking it and doing the same thing over and over until you know it evaporated. But uh, bartender wouldn't like that. But uh, I want to um <coughs> dedicate the show this is dedicated to the one I love. to a friend uh, a mind uh, from the uh, one of my, um, my to my fitness group on Facebook the International Brotherhood of Polyvons mr. Jeff Bankins who is now in the Guinness Book of World Record mm. for having the world's strongest neck he pulled uh, a whole bunch of SUVs with his neck and uh, he, uh, Mr. Jeff Bankins, Jeff T-Rex Bankins, is his uh, gimmick name, T-Rex, has been um, publicly performing feats of strength of all various kinds. And I've watched the videos, and he's a hell of a nice guy. So I'm going to give a shout out and a salute and dedicate the show to T-Rex Jeff Bankins, Bam Bam Bankins. There you go. Okay, the man with the world's strongest neck. Wow. So, and he's the strongest man in in his neck of the woods. Uh, uh, All right. Uh, Thank you for joining us this week for uh, uncensored, hard-hitting truth. We'll see you next time. I just heard the rain fall. Oh, it's been falling. I think it stopped. I'm, I started. I think there, it started, but down now it stopped. All right. Say uh, so long to these people. Yeah, get out of the rain. Yeah. 
This has been a Mega Life 21 production.